I saw it. That's, you know, it's so chill that she was just walking and I took my daughter. There are things that we can take for granted. We are driving, we are in the comfort of a car, we are warm, we are going to reach where we are going in good time. And it is very easy for you to think uh, that everybody else is driving because you are. Mm -hmm. And I, I reminded her and reminded myself. And actually, as I did that, I just took, I, you know, I just started praising God and telling him, God, I thank you um, that I'm driving and I want you really to know that I'm grateful that I have a car. Because there are things that you can do for over many years. I've been driving for the last over 20 years. Mm -hmm. So it is very easy, some things that you have, mm -hmm. for you to take them for granted. Mm -hmm. And so I was thanking God and telling him, thank you that I am driving. I don't know why that, when I saw that lady, it, is, you know, it kind of touched my heart. And uh, so there are things that you take for granted. And so also I'm grateful for this invitation, truly, uh, to Elnet and uh, the team, and more particularly to Elena who has been uh, also a very good friend and someone that we have been working along academically and otherwise in our, you know, she has attended m many of my programs. And so I am excited this morning to share what I have, uh, with what I was given. Uh, uh, but maybe you need to know, she said I say a little bit about myself. Uh, what I'm excited about is that next year I will turning 50 so, <laughs> so I can't wait for 19, 20, uh, 2019 it is a, you know, it's a great year it will be a great year for me Mary you should make sure that you take me a photo of my phone <laughs> so that I can remember how I used to look when I was 49 <laughs> yes I'm turning 49 this year so definitely next year December will be 50 and I'm grateful to God I am married to one husband, a man. <laughs> Nowadays, I think it's necessary yeah, to say because you know we know what has been happening, yeah. and that we God has blessed us with five children, a truly African woman. <laughs> Am I not? Yes. So I followed the steps of my mom. Oh. Yes, my mom has five children. She has four girls and one son. Mm -hmm. I said I think that is not a bad idea. I also got four daughters. And that's all. Oh, yes, wow. <laughs> yeah, so our uh, first one is uh, a lawyer by profession. Our second one is Mary, who is here. She's an events organizer. Uh, she's very passionate about events. If you want your event to just be smooth and to run, she, she does. We had a conference last week, an international women's conference which are uh, of an organization that I run called MLOS Africa and she organized and it was powerful. Uh, the third one is also a girl, she's also a lawyer, she's, but now she's in the Kenya School of Law. Then we have the fourth one, he's our son, he's in the university, first year in computer technology. Now because Kenya tunasemanga wazea kubuka, I also remembered after staying for some time. So we have a nine year old. <laughs> it's, a, it's nice, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, so at least when I go home there, there's someone at least to jump on me. And, yeah, because the others, they just go to their room and lock themselves. So if, and for you to get inside there as much as it's your house, you actually have to knock <laughs> and ask for permission, you know? So, yeah, so that is the way my family is. My husband is also a businessman, uh, he runs a company that is called Wapong Technologies, is a Safaricom dealer. He deals with financial, it's more of a financial institution. He's a Safaricom dealer, Airtel, and he also do a lot of agency banking for the local banks. So that is what he does. Here, Betty, I do, uh, I run a company called Wapcom Ventures Limited. It's a training and business management company. So we do corporate trainings. As we, I speak here, there's a big training for Safaricom that is going on with, uh, with some of my consultants at Tamarind Tree Hotel in, uh, in Langata. So we do a lot of corporate trainings. We do also training for churches. We train on leadership. We train on in communication. Uh, because we have also realized that, you know, it's not just enough just to have Christ. There are also things that you need to have that will help you to communicate that Christ. Mm -hmm. And so even in the churches, we, uh, I do a lot of communication, especially for the leaders, uh, communication skills. 
help pastors, you know, some have gotten the calling, maybe they didn't get an opportunity to go to a formal school uh, where they could do maybe communication skills. So I take them through programs of communication so they can also be articulate in the way they develop their messages and all that. And so that is what I do. I also run a camp uh, an organization. It's it's called MLOS because it's men and ladies of substance. Very men and ladies of substance. So it's called MLOS Africa. So we normally have the focus is on women, yes, empowering them. And for us, it's not about our, any competition. MLOS Africa is about empowering women and young women, emerging leaders for that matter, so that they be holistic. So that we don't have this woman who is so successful in her career but her family is falling apart. And so that is where MLOS comes in. And why we say M, uh, men, M for, is for men is because we have what we call he for she, that is men who support women in their leadership and development. So we have he for she in MLOS, and that is where that M comes from. And so that is what we, we do, and that's the conference we had last, last week. So Dr. Tim has missed a lot, but uh, if there's, only, if there's anyone who was taping, you can give to him, isn't it? Yes. Or you can even do in one on one. Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. I now with all that, now you know who I am, and I want to uh, really appreciate that I'm here this morning. I'm not going to take much of your time. Uh, I'm actually traveling after this. Wow. Yeah, I'm traveling. So I said, well. I'll do both because the traveling is not this early. Yes, I'll still come and still do my travel. So I am grateful to be here once again. And the topic that I was given on is on ethical convictions, uh, you know, for doing business. Okay. And I want first to talk about where is Edwin? Edwin, how can he, he was writing to me and he's not here. <laughs> Should have come to see the person that he was communicating with, isn't it? So, uh, first of all, it's important for us to know what really do we mean when we talk of a conviction. What is ethical conviction? It is actually to, you know, what is it's a principles or in accordance with the principles of conduct that are considered to be correct, to be right or wrong. So when we talk of ethical convictions, we are talking of what is it that you consider to be right or wrong. But it is very interesting when I was doing the studies on this to realize that sometimes convictions, why we are talking today about ethical convictions, because there is a possibility therefore of having convictions that are not ethical, yeah. isn't it? Because if we talk of ethical convictions, then definitely I'm thinking there must be some convictions yeah. that may not be ethical. Because there are people who believe in this country, for you to do business, for you to excel, you must corrupt, you must bribe someone, somewhere. And it is a conviction. Is it not a conviction? Yes, it is. It's a conviction. And therefore, they are not able to separate themselves with that kind of a conviction. They believe so. And we have had in the street, I'm in the marketplace, and I can tell you, I encounter those unethical convictions every day. Someone will tell me, Betty, if that's the way you do it, uh, I'm sorry, you're not willing to go far. And as we are saying, when you get the ethical convictions, is you, they must come from the basis of what you believe in, the internal belief system that you have. It could be godly, it could be how you've been brought up in your family, it could be orientation, it can be through association, whatever it is. But for you to have what you're calling ethical conviction, it must be something that you're ready to risk for. It is not easy. And I'm sure for you that have been in the marketplace, you know that what I'm saying is true. It is not easy. You will take your business will take longer to grow than people who have no ethical convictions. Isn't it? So the, the question that we should be asking ourselves is are we ready to pay the price? Because there's a price to be paid. 
are we ready to pay the price? Because if you want to be ethical, your ethical convictions, you should be asking the big question now. Which authority do you subscribe to? Because if you subscribe to the authority, for example, of God or, or godliness, then that is what you subject yourself, your convictions to. So you, we need to answer that question and tell ourselves, who, which authority do you subscribe to? And who says what is right and what is wrong? That is where you have to answer those questions. Who tells you or who defines for you what is right and what is wrong? You also, we also need to think about what governs what is right and what is wrong. Those questions we must answer as business leaders with all honesty in our hearts. Because when we answer those questions honestly, then we start aligning ourselves to real ethical convictions. So that we deline ourselves from an ethical conviction. Because there are things that we have grown up being taught. Think of a family where children hear their parents conversing and saying how, how much they give to get a business deal. Don't those things happen? Now, like me, who are young adults, they listen to, my, to our conversations with my husband. And they will catch up. And because we are saying they are those that have unethical convictions, they speak without worry. So they will speak of how they bribed, or they speak of what they did, so that they could get the deal across. Isn't it? Now, therefore, we are saying, when we are talking these things, we pick, our children pick. And that is what is now governing some of the young people, because that's what they are believing. Actually, as a matter of fact, when you talked of the construction industry, why I was smiling is because I have a young man that I've actually been mentoring. He's a, uh, he's a, a fifth year university student at Nairobi, uh, University of Nairobi. Mm -hmm. And he's my mentee. I, I mean, I, he's in my program. Mm -hmm. Elena knows the program that I run, I run for young, enter, uh, young entrepreneurs and young people that are coming up. And when he came, he actually was, at one point, he was attached to an institution that I don't want to mention. And so he was supposed to, um, you know, but he was placed at the reception. So for the first time he was wondering, why am I, I'm an, you know, I'm a fifth year, why am I being put at the, at the reception? Then when he came for the, uh, when we had a conversation with him, he told me, hey, Madam Betty, I was so shocked. I didn't know, ask him, Andrew, what happened? The things that I saw there, I can't believe. Is this the way our country runs? Do these things happen to you here? <laughs> the young man was totally shocked. And that tells me because I know his parents, the parents are very ethical. So this young man had never been exposed to that. But when we went for that internship, that's the time he got exposed. At the reception, that is where the money exchanges hands. Do you want to be graded as your company to be great? Seven, four, three, one, those things? <laughs> then you do what? Literally. Money in millions, in cash, not in check, were coming in and out with envelopes. He told me he has never seen that kind of money in his life. And the boy was so shocked. And so, it's a long story. So we, we discussed, uh, that actually formed the basis of that day, that we, our discussions with him that day. And so what am I arriving at? I'm saying that we must answer this question that I've seen. The big question is, who? is telling us what is right and what is wrong. We must know which people model we model after. Are they ethical themselves? Because that is how you get your ethical convictions. Because ethical convictions have sources. So what is your source? And which authority do you subscribe to? You must answer that question genuinely to yourself. And what governs what is right and what is wrong? Those are critical questions that if we need, we are going to develop our ethical convictions as 
individuals, then those are questions that we must answer correctly and honestly so that we can align ourselves to real ethical convictions. Knowing that for sure this is not right and for sure according to the authority that I subscribe to, this is wrong and you go for it. But you don't go for it without counting the costs. For those that read the Bible, allow me to, put, uh, to say what Jesus said, that if any man want to follow me, must do what? Must do what? Deny, Deny himself and is carry his own cross. cross. And when a man wants to build a house, what did Jesus say? You know he's a, he was such a powerful person, isn't it? He said when a man wants to build a house, what does he do? He sits down. Yes. The thought is there, the thought is good. Yes. But it's under, building a house is awesome. But he says when you, sit, when you want to build a house, Jesus said that man sits down and do, does what? Calculate what? The cost. the cost. So if you want to live and to do your business ethically, one of the things I want to tell you out of personal experience is that you have to sit down and do something we call calculations. You know? You sit down and do what? Count the cost. Because definitely there's a cost to you. <coughs> and the cost, and I'll tell you my story. Uh, because it's one of the things that I, I was supposed to do so that you can see and you know learn from a few things. I cannot claim to be the expert, to be the most ethical, I cannot claim not, you know, not to have struggled. I have, but I'll tell you how God has helped me this far. But before I give my story, I want to say that an organization can be as ethical, can only be as ethical as its employees. If you're running a business, or if you have people working under you, either in a department or elsewhere, one of the things, even in your own family, those people can only be as ethical, either that organization or that family can be as ethical as the members are. We cannot talk of a business, a business or an organization that is ethical if the employees themselves are not ethical. And so it therefore means that the business leader has got a responsibility, a great responsibility, because you set the mold. You set the standards of how business is done in your organization, or in the department, or in the board, like our brother here, or in the board that you're in and you're the chair. As a leader there, you have got a greater responsibility to be able to set the standards. You must agree, as a leader, you are the one to speak, to communicate and let them know what, how do we do business here. It comes from there, from the leadership. And that is why it is important for people to know from the word go how you do your business. What are the terms of engagement? We are very quick when we are doing contracts to put terms of engagement on everything else except on our values. Isn't it? Yes. We can talk of the money on the contract. We say of everything else except what we believe in and what we stand for and what our organization represents. And it is something that I'm challenging all of us to be able to do. You take it up. Count the cost, yes. There are some that you give that contract and they'll say, this is not the way I work. You say thank you and you move to the next place. But one thing I know for sure, you not sleep hungry because you have a faithful God. It may not be easy. And I tell Christians, especially those that are Christian and they're in business, I tell them, I don't think Jesus promised anybody. You know, I don't know why when we talk to people about Christ, we want to make them feel that when they come to Christ, all their problems are gone. That is not true gospel. Because my Bible does not tell me that. My Bible tells me, actually, after I get all this, there are tribulations that are added. In the list, just read the list. The list is it's, it's very interesting, you know? But we, I don't know why we, we just choose a particular part and we move with it. And when we preach in the crusades, in churches, we tell people, come to Christ. You know, your marriage is going to come and work just automatically. But I can tell you, many Christian marriages are struggling. And they are born again, and they are going to heaven. But I say, I would better reach there, limping, but I'm inside. 
Isn't it? Isn't it? Yes. So that is what we are saying. You are going to come the cost. As a leader, I want you to know that there are many things that you have to put and it is your responsibility to set the standards. There are things that my team can't ask me because they know it is something that we cannot talk about. Isn't it? There are people that, let me give you an example. There's a time I, there's a big, uh, one of the big banks, actually an international bank. We had done, we had tendered. Just a normal process. We had everything they had asked for. And I knew that I have no problem. We are able to deliver. And we'll be looking at some of the skill sets that we require for us to do ethical business in, in a very short moment. And please, please keep me on top on the time. Okay? And this, I get a, uh, okay, my PA calls, uh, you know, tells me, I was in a meeting and there's this person who kept on calling the office and calling until he said, I must talk to the chief trainer. Then uh, she knocks, I know that is out of ordinary for her, so if she comes or drops me a note in a meeting, I know it is something that I need to attend to urgently. So I step out. She said, there is someone who has been calling from this bank and they have said there is something about the tender that we did and he wants to talk with you, the CEO, the chief trainer. It's you that they want to talk to. Okay. He said, fine. So I said, is he online? No, I have told him to give me two minutes, I call. Then I told her, call back. So I talked and this person on the other line introduces himself. Uh, and clearly, yes, it is true, it was really from the bank because it could uh, even, the, you know, they introduced on the other side, I could know it is true, and said I'm the procurement manager and uh, I can see you got very good document here. Actually, we have, you have been awarded. You are, you, your organization talked in what we are looking for, the training services, so, um, but, Mbuzi Yawaze. <laughs> Simple. He has not seen my face. He doesn't know who he's talking to. And he has the courage. And I said, oh my goodness. This is how far we have come. Yeah. That you can call someone, you actually don't know who you're talking to. It's on phone and you're comfortable asking for Buzi Yawaze. If that is hot water, I would really appreciate it. Warm water. Yes, warm. Just warm. So, and uh, I read to him, I said, well, I've had, and thank you, I'm, I'm, I'm really happy that we have really been awarded. Mm. However, I don't work like that. Yeah. It was simple, and I'll tell you why. Mm. I will tell you when we, are, we, I will be telling you a few things, I'll tell you why. And I told him, uh, what I would uh, suggest is that if, Wapcom Ventures satisfied the board or the panel that was doing the evaluation. Please go ahead and give us the job. I'll appreciate And one thing I know is that if you give us the work, we'll deliver. However, because we are not able to meet what you ask for, if it seems all right for you to withdraw the award, I'll still be fine. I think that man has never been told like that. He just disconnected. And I told my P, you know what? We're not going to talk about this again. If he calls, tell him what I said was final. We can't negotiate. And I won't talk to him again. And that was it. That was it. But we'll see why and what we need to develop within ourselves. So that is just one example. Out of the thousand, since I left the corporate to do my private practice, it's seven years now. We'll be turning seven years in July. And I can tell you it has been a journey. It has been a journey that I cannot be able to tell you here. She has attended my forum. She, she can maybe give you some of the stories I've given them in the forums. Eh? It has been a journey. But I am comfortable. Because I have been receiving calls from people like I don't know. Like we just get calls from even very far from this country and we are doing work. By God's grace, without spending a coin, we have been able to set work conventions at Rwanda now. And now we are going to Senegal. I have not paid anybody. 
So it is possible. I want to encourage you and tell you this. All what I'm saying, it is not easy, but it is doable. And you must sit down and calculate the cost for you to do an ethical business. The problem is we want to come in and do business, but we have not laid down what can we do and what we cannot do. And then, we need to understand that business ethics is essentially about behavior and conduct risk. It's about behavior. Business ethics is about what? Behavior. behavior. How we behave. And so, it's not just about corruption. And we will be seeing what other things are we supposed to, to be taken care of, isn't it? The other thing that I want to say is that when we do business, a business ethics is about choices. Business ethics is about what? Choices. choices. You must make choices. For ethics, for business ethics, you must make choices. So your, my question to you would be, what values guide you? That is a question that I want you to answer. You can write it down, but ask, just tell me, what values guide you? What standards do we use? What are the standards that you use? What principles are at stake? We must know what principles are at stake. When we talk of business ethics, we say what is? Men, you can just take photos, it's enough. You don't have to video. Okay? So you ask yourself, what principles are at stake? Because you must have your governing principles if you want to do ethical business, isn't it? So you need to answer that question and ask yourself, if I don't do this one, what if I do what they're asking me to do? What principles are at stake? Now, you also need to do something. You must ask yourself, how will my stakeholders be affected? How will be my stakeholders <coughs> excuse me, be affected? Because when you talk of business, it means that you're not doing the business alone. There's no one doing business alone. The business you're doing, you are providing a solution or, you know, giving a, a, or meeting a certain need in the market, isn't it? Like our late, good lady there, she told us about what she's doing. She told us of, you don't have to buy furniture, you don't have to buy whatever it is. The fridge, like now my fridge I think is not working, so we should talk after this, isn't it? So that we can fix it as you give me yours. You know, here my family is big, a big fridge is not enough in my house. I must have a freezer by myself. And I realized this, that uh, the other day that it is not working. So, what am I saying? That these questions must be answered. When you're doing your business, you must know how your choices are going to affect your stakeholders. Because business is not done in isolation, isn't it? Or there's someone who is doing business for himself and for herself and for everything. Everything is just for them. Even a fundi who is making clothes, they are designing those clothes for someone to wear, isn't it? For someone else. So we are meeting needs, or we are solving, we are giving, we are offering solutions, isn't it? So you must, your stakeholders must be people that are in your thoughts when you're making ethical disease business decisions, okay? So, an ethical decision, an ethical approach to any issue will require about ends and means. The ends is the goals, the means is how to achieve those goals. So you all know that. But now, we've realized that in the marketplace, what is popular is the goal, not the means. True? Or you, you know me, I, where, where I, the market I am in, that's the way it is. I don't know if where you are, that's how it is. Yeah? The goal is, I mean, the, the, you look at the part, the, 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 the income. We are, yes. So we are saying when you're doing business, you have the goals that you want to achieve, isn't it? But you can't achieve a goal. There must be a means by which you achieve a certain goal, isn't it? And that is why I'm saying that men in the marketplace, they are not so much concerned about the means. 
What they are concerned about is what? The goal. So whichever way I go about it and reach there, it is fine. That's what I'm saying. But we can't be say we are doing ethical business and we don't care about the means by which we reach the goals that we need to reach. True? Yes. How do we reach there? You want to? You want to reach their goals. But how do you reach there? As a business leader, as a business person, how do you achieve your goals? These are questions that you need to answer. Because it is, we have said that business ethics is about choices. So you need to choose carefully what means you have already identified your goals, but how do you want to achieve those goals? Are the ways or the means that you're going to use, are they ethical? Are they ethical? Remember we started by saying the ethical part of it is depends on your, con your ethical convictions depends on your who is at who you think who tells you what is right or wrong, isn't it? We also said how, where you have got the source of your ethical convictions really determines. So even when you come to this and making the choices, then we are saying that at that point when you need to know how to achieve your goals, your means, how the means that you're going to use to achieve your goal is as going to be as important for you as the goal that you want to achieve. Are we together? Are we together? Yes. So we have to make choices. And these choices sometimes are tough choices. Now, I won't just go because of time to a skill set required for ethical business. We can't be talking, we can't be talking of ethical business and ethical convictions just in vacuum. We must know how then do we develop that? What is required when we are talking of ethics? Is this just when you don't bribe? So if I don't bribe now, I'm ethical. Is that all? Because you see, it is very easy for us to think ethics is just around corrupting or not corrupting, bribing or not bribing. That's not everything. So I may not exist or exhaust the list, of course. I have only 10 minutes. But I want us to look at a few things that us, Betty, have been helping me to run my company and to be able to help others. Number one is fairness. Fairness is part of being ethical. So when we talk of fairness, we don't find it easy to favor others, to favor some and disadvantage others in the process of favoring. Because then that becomes unethical. Okay? In business. So if, if a certain team member deserves a reward, please let it go to them, even if they come from the tribe that you don't like. Let it go there. So being fair is being ethical. So that we, I don't want us to just focus that only ethical issues and in business is only what? About corruption or not being corrupt. Okay? Because we have seen places where certain people have been favored by the business leader until the others feel demotivated. Okay? We must practice fairness. We give what deserves, which each person deserves to be given. Fairness. Two, we must be honest. Honesty is, is being ethical. Can we be trusted with other people's affairs? In particular, in business, because we are talking about business ethics. Honesty. Can we be trusted with other people's affairs? That is why people, when they are doing, uh, because there's a lot of dishonesty around businesses, that's why people, when they are doing their contracts, they will do a circumventing clause. Non circumventing clause. Who is familiar with that? That clause details I do that because I'm also working with some people that I can't trust because they we subscribe to different authorities. So for me to be, to make sure that my, my company is protected and I'm protected, I have to do that. So my lawyer will do that. 
Why? Because there are people, for example, we do business with my brother here and I introduce him to a third party and we are doing business. So in the process, they decide we can do away with this lady. Tufanya hii kitu pamoja. Situnaeleano. That is unethical. And so the question is, can you be trusted with other people's affairs? So honesty, fairness, honesty. Number three, quality. Quality. Quality, quality. It is an ethical issue. Because people must, you must learn how to give people value for the investment in times of time and other resources. Quality is not something that we can negotiate as business leaders. If we are talking of being ethical, please give people value for what they have in, for their input. There must be a ROI, that is return on investment. That is what, that is ethical business. <coughs> because if we can't be ethical by giving quality, then we, can, we cannot talk of being ethical if we can't give quality where people have paid their money or invested their time or invested other resources. So quality is a must. Are we together? We must give quality. At work conventures, that is our differentiating factor. That when we are given a training, I only work with the best consultants we have in this country. And I'm telling you the truth. I get the best. Right now, the training that is going on, I have brought someone from all the way from India to do sales for Safaricom. Safaricom and Vivo Energy. They are my clients. And they wanted their sales to, to go up. So I have a local expert, and I brought the other guy all the way from India. They are at Tamale. They are doing that training. I can't... That is something that I cannot compromise. If we talk of business, because they are also going to pay, and they're not paying cheaply, isn't it? So if they pay, can you give them equal value or even exceed because you are more you are ethical? So let's not give people substandard. If you're selling milk, my sister, my brother, please don't put water. Put let people pay you for real milk. Because nowadays we don't if we are actually taking milk or we are taking powder. Or oh, we are taking unga ya the the in a chapati or coconuts water. You do we no longer understand about quality in this country, and it is unfortunate. But I'm so happy for Elnet, and I want to be part of this, where we can drive real business ethics, ethical business, where we are giving people quality for what we have negotiated with them. Are we together? Yes. So let's do that. Okay? And I'm hoping that as I give you these points, these are things you're going to consider. This is not a church. Come and get one church in the outer call. But I want personal commitment. You make your personal commitment in these things that I'm mentioning. So that you see, okay, quality. I don't think I've really been giving quality. And from today, I want to give quality. If you, are, you have a boutique, my sister, don't tell people that this is from Italy. If you know it is from China, say it. Let me buy it knowing I'm buying from China. I mean, these are simple things. But that is what, when you're talking of ethical business, that's exactly what you're talking about. It can't be anything else. And then the team spirit. As leaders, we are in business of building others. So we must ask ourselves, are we building groups or are we building teams? I have three minutes. Okay? Then the next one is, so that one is team spirit. We must, it is ethical when we build teams. Because when you're building a team, it means that you're working together. You're developing others. You're investing in other people. Isn't it? You're not growing, going to grow alone. Like for me, in our, in, in work conventions, I can only hire what nobody inside the company can do. If someone can do that, I promote them to that position. Then I can hire their position. That is building a team. Because ethical business also means we are building other people. Are we together? Not bringing people down. It is building up other people. Are we together? And lastly, we must have what we call internal and personal values. Internal and personal 
values. I call this the non-negotiable. I call them the non-negotiable. Your personal, your internal values should be so clear that people don't guess. People know what to talk to you about. Are we together? I have been appointed in this country for some positions and I just said no. Last week I was called again in a meeting and I told them, well, if you give me any professional position that has nothing to do with politics or I'll be told what to do, that where I should be, I'll practice what I need to practice. I'll do. And I looked at that man right there, there were two of them, the one who was sent, of course, is, is a kingmaker, and the, the other man who was there. And I took them that way. I was called in the parliament house. I don't even know the last time. Maybe I went there when I was in high school. I was visit to court in Nairobi. No, me, I'm not. I'm not me, I'm a very village girl. What you are seeing here is the dream of the Lord. <laughs> um, people don't believe it, but totally inside me, I'm totally a very village girl. And so, I, but I looked at this man and I told him, that is the only position I can take as the country looks like this time. And he couldn't believe it. He said, that's amazing. And he said, okay, fine. Let's, uh, let's continue having discussion and see the way forward. I said, that's okay. I'm not in a hurry. But you can, many people will be called and they want to say yes immediately for anything. You've not even calculated the cost. I want any position that I'm given. I want to sit down and calculate the cost. I have seen our own brothers and sisters lose their testimony for a position. Oh, yes. You know? So I want to calculate the cost. I want really to know. I want to know. Is the position that I'm saying yes to? I am, I am ready for it. Am I able? Have God also even prepared me enough? Because you also know that some of these responsibilities, why some people go and fail? Because they are just given to them and they were not even ready and they have never known how to use the word no and that is how i'm going to conclude by telling you this we have to know we have to have internal and personal values and ethical convictions that gives us the courage to say no it is a beautiful word no is a beautiful word and most of us don't know how to use it but for you that is listening to me this morning, I want you to know that saying no, use that word, be comfortable in that word. When it is a no, and you know that ethically and your convictions and your values are saying that what you need, you are addressing right that time, that the answer should be no, please go ahead, give the no. Comfortably with no compromise, no regrets. Those are what we call the no. Negotiate. Let people know we can negotiate how much you want me to charge you for your training. You can charge me how much you're going to do my, my, give me your furniture for, or you're going to do my bridge or whatever it is. But let them know there are things about your values that you cannot negotiate. And it is, it is really sad if we don't have what, we, if you as a person don't have what you call now, negotiate. There must be. If you want to be an ethical business leader, then you must have the non-negotiable. So that whatever else you can negotiate, it has nothing that is going to interfere in your values. And therefore, that helps us to lead our ethical businesses. And what I'm excited about LNET this morning is that you, we don't have to be a mass. You just need to have a few fully convicted ethical people with ethical convictions mm -hmm. and in our own way we affect where we are if every person here is having maybe two or three people working under them and if those three can take up what you have and then we have what we call a multiplication effect i am telling you the truth it is a force that nobody can stop and this is what I've been doing in my forums. My forums, yes, they are, they could be incorporated in business, but it is very, you don't confuse when you, when you listen to me, you don't get confused how I do my business. It is clear. One thing I want to tell you, 
and to encourage all of you, and especially the team uh, that is leading this, uh, uh, that is leading Elmet, is that one thing I want to tell you. It is really hard for anyone to fight anybody that is ready to die for what they believe in. That is why El Al Shabab have become a nuisance in the whole world. Why? Because those guys don't have nothing to lose because even their own lives they have given. So if, when you're fighting with someone who is fully convicted on something, you, you are actually fighting a losing battle. So if all of us here, we are convicted on ethical, doing ethical business, you will actually know that this is a force that no one can stop. And we are going to go far. Are we together? Yes. So the, 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 the five skill sets that I've given is what I practice myself. And I have learned because I'm a lady, I have learned to negotiate with my brain. So the ladies that are in the house, <laughs> negotiate with your brain. When media people have come to interview me, you can check some of the interviews online. One of the things I remember like uh, Business Daily, there's a time they came to my office and they were asking me, so now because the industry you are in is male dominated and most of the organizations in this country, 90% are run by men. So when you go for jobs, how do you go to talk to those men? How do you ensure that you're on track? And tell them it's simple. I don't go to negotiate for businesses as a woman. I go to negotiate businesses as a professional. So I sell my brain to them. So it's not about being female or male. It's about can I deliver what you're looking for? Period. And that guy was like, wow. <laughs> so if you have something to offer, offer it ethically. Thank you so much. I wish to end there. I can say it. Yeah, please, Elena. Um, I've seen you working with your husband. Yes. In the forums that you've had, you had testimonies from the business leaders here and their areas of whatever they practice. Yes. Uh, they've gotten a lot of conviction also from their partners. Yes. Like their, their wives and their husbands and mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Um, in order for you to just explain how your husband has. Uh, help to do your mentor. I don't know. It's a way that you guys have put uh, <laughs> your business together. Yes. Things together. Yes. And you see, you're a village guy. But you're not going to do it. Yes. Let's see, you talk to your mama. Why are you talking about your mama? Yes. So, you look at the balance. How do you balance out that? Yes. And also, like, your children. Because you've mentored them and. Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. I think that's a good question. Yeah, because when it comes to family businesses, it's not that easy. Uh, I remember our first, when I left employment, our first five years doing business together, we fought enough times. Yeah, I like being real, because that's the only way I can help you. Because we are thinking differently. So me, I'm thinking this way. I'm a very detailed person by nature. So my husband, Naya Nule, let's move. But me, I'm very logical. I want to see things falling, you know. I don't know if you can get what I'm saying. Yeah, there must be, it's, it's, it's coherent. It's, it's, you know, from one step to step two. My husband doesn't mind jumping from step one to step five. <laughs> and uh, for the first few years, we were like, huh? Really? This is the way it is going to run, you know? But you, you, you continue until you get to the rhythm. When I left employment, this is actually, I want to put what my husband told me one morning. He told me, because for the 17 years that I worked in the corporate world, I never gave an excuse of going to work with Never. So my husband told me, if the things that you're doing right now, and you know he knew that me, if I get him something, I'm in it. So he told me, and I think he had to speak, and he was saying, if the same energy, if you did your own thing, this that you have been saying you do, 
you leave employment and give you the support. Come out and do what? It would excel. If you put the same energy and two years down the line after he told me that I actually stepped out and started work conventions. But still, even when I was employed, I was still a director in the company that is the CEO. So I still used to help him. Now, one of the ways that we did is my husband mentored me into business. He mentored me. It's where now, where a teacher, the student becomes greater than the teacher. <laughs> because he mentored me. Went, I went ahead. And now I, I mentor him, and to some extent we mentor each other in a way in our businesses. So we we one how we have managed is one of the things that we've done, and this is what we were talking to the Family Business Association of Kenya because they have invited us to speak as couple. One of the ways we have managed is to ensure that when we are in the office, it's office, it's work, okay. When we get home, we don't talk anything related to work. Yes. Even with our children, we don't talk work at home. We only talk work when we're in the office or on our way to the office. Because we don't want that, you know, because now you have been called Madame since morning. <laughs> and you, it's very easily for you to come and expect a Madame in the house, which is not really practical. So we have decided. We decided, we talked and said, this is the way we are going to run our business. Everything else, let's meet there. And if there are issues when there's a board meeting, let's deal with as much issues as possible. But when we come home, let's just be a husband and a wife and let the rest of us be our children. Interestingly, all our children have worked in our companies. When they close school, and especially when they finish their Form 4, the four adult ones, they all have worked. Some have worked in work conventions, others have worked in work home technologies. They have worked there because we want them to appreciate the value of hard work, and that's what we do. And when we put them there, they don't report to us. Actually, my son, when he finished from four, he was working, and he was working in an, as an MPESA as attendant here at Timor. You know, Timor, the Tuskies, we are, if you have gone to Tuskies and with the raw money, you'll see Wacom Technologies. That's the company I'm talking about. And my son, with the time he learned, he cannot ask me permission because I'm in the house. Because in that company, I'm the direct HR director. He couldn't understand. Mom, it's okay. Have you talked to your supervisor? And she's like, huh? Yeah. I asked him, I don't pay you, do I? Who pays you? The accountant. Well, so, meaning this, the other things that are done. Yeah, you are in the system, you are an employee, so anything. And if you go to hospital, please give to your supervisor there. I will pay for the money for the hospital. <laughs> but please give the doctor's letter. If you are given a day off or anything, your supervisor must have that. Because that is the way, and she can be a witness, that is the way we have trained them. Because we want them to know they will not work for our companies all their lives. So that when they come to work with you, Elena, they know that they have to learn to take instructions. Isn't it? Yes. And this life is about, there must be someone you submit yourself to. You can't be on the top everywhere. There must be people that you submit to. So that is the way we have worked and helping them to integrate uh, even their faith with what they are doing and hard work, the values of hard work. And we tell them we don't, uh, you know, the way people say that money is not uh, gotten from trees. But we tell them in, in for adventure that there are some people where they can get from the trees. Somebody also planted the trees. So still some work has to be done, whichever way. So that is the way we try to manage. And um, it's knowing our position, knowing that when I'm at home, I'm a wife and I'm a mother, period. Nothing else get, enters my mind at that particular time. When I enter into my house, that's exactly who I am. So I'll dress down. I'll not be in high heel as I am this morning, <laughs> uh, Dr. Yeah. Uh, and be a wife and be a mother and cook like on Sundays because of course my schedules are usually very tight but on Sundays it's my cooking day for my, my, my family. I cook for them in the evening we, or lunch if we come home at, for lunch on Sunday I'll cook but Sunday is my day because even the house help that day I you go job. I do 
do that for them. So at least I make sure that my presence is felt in the family because there must be that balance. And him as a husband, he's a very busy man. You know? But even being busy, we always keep on reminding each other. And at least for us, what we have done to make ourselves, because both of us have very busy lives, what we have done is that we have made arrangements that every two weeks we have dinner, I and my husband, or have lunch together. Regardless, and to me that is a time that you not talk to me even if it's a weekday, and I'll not take any engagement. We go out for lunch or we go for dinner, whichever works for both of us. And every month we have, we go all of us as a family, we go out for dinner. Just out of our own home, we have managed to be taking this tribe of ours out somewhere and talk. Then after every two months, we normally take a weekend from Friday to Saturday evening, we come Saturday evening back to Nairobi as a family, just to reconnect and just to know where is what, what are we struggling with. Then I and my husband, each of us have got different arrangements with the children. So for me, like, um, I will go out with each of them, go out either for breakfast, whatever is convenient. We just plan around our schedules. We purpose. This is hard work, I'm telling you. We purpose. We go, and that's why coming here at 6, that we actually we were here at 617, outside here. It's not a struggle, because sometimes I'll need to go with her for breakfast. It has to be early so that I can also meet my other day program or schedule. So we purpose that you pick, we pick children at random, but make sure at, by a certain period of time we have gone out with the other, one of the children, each of them, and have a one-on-one -on -one talk with them. And we get to know, because Different, you know, the children, because they are many, there is a way they relate to each of us differently. Of course, you know that girls are daddies, <laughs> children, and my son yeah. is my son. So we balance all that and get, uh, get working together as a family. So that is the way we manage it. That's the way we, tr we try to keep, but to keep the balance in the family. But it is really hard work, but it is doable because we do. Yes. The last one. Okay. Very fast then. Yeah, very fast. Yes. The first thing is giving to you a position of care. Okay. It depends with the. Let's say after you've given the business. Uh huh. And no one asks for anything. But just out of your heart. Volition? Yeah. That's good. As that is Betty's opinion. I don't know what other people's opinion is, but I have done that over and over again. When people give me business and they didn't ask for anything, I choose, as long as it's not um, you know, a condition to be given the job, yes. whatever I give, it's good to be grateful to people. It's good to be grateful. And also, like tokens, also, if, for example, you're working with uh, companies like Safari Commanders, you also need to understand what, what their policies, their company policies are, as towards giving tokens or gifts because there are some companies which strictly forbidden even if you want to say thank you they don't want it. so you need also to understand what do they say yeah so nothing wrong as far as i'm concerned yes thank, thank you so much